years I've worked here, I never had tools. I really feel like we were able to finally do what we need to do to service our customers and train our agents. So that was terrific feedback. But um, yeah, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the case study. Uh, we have a, a PDF that you can download from our website. It's a lot more detailed, talks about some of these things, a bunch more quotes, and uh, a lot more detail about some of the challenges that we had and uh, you know, how we overcame that. So it's a good read if you're interested. Uh, you can also check out the uh, Presence Company website. They have you know, some screen demos, things like that about their product, or give us a call. We'll be happy to help you there. Uh, and then anybody wants a copy of the uh, presentation, I know they're going to be up on the TMC website or the Astrocon website. But if you can't wait, shoot me an email. And uh, we'll open it up to uh, Q&A now. Anybody have any questions? Yes. Okay, yeah, the question was, how does this pricing compare with Avaya? And from a selling perspective, how do you avoid, you know, cutting your throat as an asterisk reseller? Because the, you know, the motivation is to try to come in with a, a pretty low price uh, just because there's, there's open source in the mix. So the quote I use with customers a lot is that open source is many things. It's not free. It's flexible. And that's, that's the real key selling point. Uh, presence is a commercial product. So when we bring that in, it's licensed based on numbers of agents in different modules. So if you have incoming calls, that's one module. If you're doing outbound uh, preview dialing, that's one thing. If you're doing outbound predictive dialing where you're trying to do answering machine detection and screen callers, that's kind of a little more pricey. So it really just depends. Uh, but I think relative to the Avaya cost, we're probably about 50%, somewhere in that ballpark for the same thing. Uh, maybe even more when you, you know, really make it apples to apples because it's difficult with Avaya. You add a lot of things on for recording. There's a lot of third-party products that you need to bring in to make the, the you know, thing do exactly what it does. So it, it really is tough to just say, you know, straight. But, yeah, I, somewhere in that ballpark. I know they shopped it pretty hard. Brian? Good question. So it was, uh, why was Presence selected? There were obviously several other uh, contact center platforms that integrate natively or, you know, maybe not natively, but cleanly with Asterisk. So why did the customer end up choosing Presence and why did we choose Presence to uh, lead the solution? Um, I think it started because the customer actually came to a trade show that we were doing jointly with Presence. So they had seen the demo and so forth. So that helped, you know, obviously our uh, selling direction. but. Uh, Basically, they shopped hard. They looked at all the different platforms. They looked really hard at Asterisk, whether they should go with some other open source project or something like that. But they decided because of the maturity and the robustness of the Asterisk uh, community, both from a support and from a development perspective, that it was the choice. Uh, so they were really boiled down to the contact center and whether they could survive on just you know, some analytics product bolted onto Asterisk ACD or something else. But ultimately, the, the combination of the screen pops the integration with the web application, and then just the SQL server that they could leverage to tie in with their other analytics to get a better perspective on what was going on. Uh, they liked the solution. So there are a few other ones out there that, that do integrate with Asterisk, and we've had some experience. Um, we like Presence because it's stable and because it is a, uh, it's a mature product. It doesn't have a lot of bugs. It does what it does. And it's what supervisors and agents really kind of are used to in the enterprise contact center world. So I hope that answered the question. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, we could, I guess. Uh, email us offline. We'll be happy to, to talk about it. Uh, not a big project, but yeah, we can talk about that, sure. Uh-huh. 
That's correct. The question was, is Harriet Carter a domestic or an international company? Uh, they are uh, exclusively based in the U.S. I don't believe they mail the catalog internationally, but they do have the website, and I know they do take some orders internationally. Um, the outsourcers, is that the question? So the question was, if we were doing the solution in Europe or Asia, would the problems be similar with the PSTN carriers or, and so forth? And yeah, I think carriers are pretty much the same anywhere. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but is there a country out there where they actually you know, deliver right every time? No? OK, that's what I thought. Uh, anyone else? Yes? Mm -hmm. That was a good question. So failover, how do we accomplish that in the event that any of the edge servers fail or if the core PBX fails? Core PBX was actually the biggest concern because the edge servers are actually designed to be uh, survivable. If any one of them dies, the carrier automatically spreads the load among the other servers. So unless they're at peak, peak time, they don't actually need to bring up another machine. But we do have a standby server for that with the PSTN connectivity. And then because they've got SIP trucking now, it's a lot easier to do that. We can literally fire up a VMware instance or two or three and handle peaks in call volume or a situation where we need to take servers down for maintenance or firmware updates or whatever. Uh, so that's the edge. The core uh, is a little trickier because that is where uh, voicemail is concentrated, SIP registrations happen, and so forth. They don't have a high enough number of handsets for us to justify bringing in something like Camellio to do a more complex uh, architecture. So we just have a, a hot, cold, spare system where we have a uh, VMware instance that's a replica of the core PBX ready to be fired up in the event that it's needed. And then all those calls come into one of the edge servers in the event that the core server is unavailable with the PSTN. So the carrier knows in the event that the primary trunk groups, it'll hunt through one or two or three PRIs on the core PBX before it goes out to the edge server trunk groups. And if those trunk groups go down, it just immediately sends those calls over there. The edge servers have a dial plan smart enough to know, okay, well, those calls are not order entry calls. They're going to people on the PBX, so I'm going to send those over here. If that doesn't answer, I'm going to send that over to the VMware machine. So a couple things like that. Anyone else? Yes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, good question. Um, we use a couple technologies like DRBD, which works out pretty well when you have a live uh, spare ready to go, floating IP address like that with heartbeat and such. Um, there's a bunch of different solutions out there to do that. Um, we've got some other customers where we just do backups of free PBX. They'll do a restore. It just depends on the situation. But in this case, uh, we do the, uh, you know, the more live approach. Yes? Uh, the question was, are we running Asterisk on VMware? Absolutely. Uh, not only uh, Asterisk itself, but also the Presence Open Gate solution, which is based on Asterisk and is actually where the HDD happens and all the agent interaction uh, works as well. So uh, we can pretty, uh, pretty well scale there by you know, firing up additional VMware instances and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question is, which servers are virtualized and what, what the roles are? Um, because the requirement was to physically connect to the PSTN uh, with all of the servers that went live to start, SIP trucking wasn't in the plan from day one. It was more of a long-term goal. So we have the virtualized infrastructure there for the agents. They're all SIP. They you know, have either soft phones or polycom handsets. And then on the edge, obviously, we're connecting to the PSTN via you know, TDM circuits at that point. So those are all physical machines. 